Much of the sports conversation today is about what once was and the yes. last dance just continued to deliver episodes three and four were dropped last night uh, south of the border and this morning north of the border uh, <laughs> the the michael jordan chicago bulls uh, saga continuing and yes dennis rodman was featured primarily i guess in in these episodes that just aired but man timmy the rivalry with detroit the, the Bulls yeah. Pistons rivalry and the bad boys and the rest. Nice. Um, it took you back. And I'm still trying to figure out why MJ still has so much beef with Isaiah. <laughs> well, let's get into it. Pleased to welcome well, in uh, the man who, upon his final retirement, said he had won four championship rings with three different teams in three different decades and two different millenniums. Does that about capture it john sally is that the is that all the uh all the bullet points on the resume hey man if it gets me in the hall of fame i'm all with it i doubt it <laughs> uh john spider sally you? here on tim and sid first yeah first off how are you how is the family uh, how's everyone doing in these uh in these crazy times oh wonderful down here in southern california 86 degrees staying at home which you should do anyway because it's a paradise. I live in paradise, so why anybody was complaining, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 Arash, this is you. I, I never spoke to Arash, have I? Have I ever had I, I don't think down? so, John. Oh, my I God. I spoke to you I as a nine-year-old. I yelled at you uh, while you were on the floor. I was a Laker fan growing <laughs> up. So, so oh, it was a one-way conversation back in those days. I heard you. That's why I do that voice. Uh, but I, you know, it's it's funny you mentioned that because I'm watching this Michael Jordan thing, and as Isaiah yeah. said, we didn't know the inner dwellings, uh, inner dealings with what they had going on. You know, we were the winners. We wasn't thinking about, you know, what Michael was going through. And I don't think Michael hates Isaiah. I think he he was one of the most fierce competitors of MJ, and MJ had to share the city of Chicago, had to break the city out of liking the Pistons. Chicago used to like the Pistons because Isaiah played for the Pistons. So I don't think that those kind of things, you may hear them, but I don't, I don't take them too little. I think they hated the team. They hated that we were the, the thorn in, in their paw, and it, we, were, we were the gatekeepers. So being the gatekeepers, you, know, you had to become better. You had to become better than us to beat us, and you had to be better in all different um, areas, and you could not make a mistake because we weren't playing. That's what we, we thrived on. That's the voice of John Sally, who joins us on Tim and Sid. John, I, I hear where you're coming from, except the narrative has been over the years that MJ really was the reason Isaiah didn't make the dream team back in 92. And even he's he's dropping some, uh, you know, he's calling him a bleep hole and the, and the rest in that doc. I mean, <laughs> what, what should we make of this 30 years well, later? It's, it's so funny. Every teammate Michael Jordan has has called him a bleep <laughs> right it's true right so you can't you can't be the man and somebody you know looking up that's what they see yeah. <laughs> when they look up so this is the deal um mj didn't mj magic larry they had no say so the dream team the only people that opposed was carl malone and scotty Pippen. And right. they, they didn't have any really say so, but the fact that they went with Stockton, I think the NBA looked at it as, hey, we're going with this new team in Utah. We're changing the way they look. This this is going to be our new West Coast uh, team. We need to build away from what we had because we were, for me, from 1986-87 to 91 to 90, we were we were the team that was coming up. Now with Michael Jordan and their chance and Magic, the West Coast being Magic and the East Coast being Boston, that all had to change. So yeah. it was just, we were just caught in the middle of the change of the NBA. Our old friend John Spider Sally joining us here on Tim and Sid. Uh, Brendan Malone attempted to explain the Pistons' Jordan rules, and I thought he did a good job explaining it. But were there some things that he left out of the equation that we might, when we when we might need some Spider in uh, insight on? You know what it is? Um, he didn't leave anything out. It was really um, it was really what he said. So the deal was this. We knew he didn't want to pass the ball. 
okay? He wanted to take yeah. 30 shots a game. So if you ever get him to stop his rhythm, then you can go back and find your man because he didn't trust his teammates to pass him the ball. And he was better when he was on the right side of the court than when he was on the left. So he would dribble left to put it back in his right hand. So the deal was if he's dribbling left, don't let him put it in his right hand. Mm. And if he's dribbling left and he's going toward the basket, everybody comes because he's going to see everybody come. And if he takes flight and it's close to the basket, you put a body on him. And when you do that with people in the air, somebody tends to fall. So (laughs) that was the mentality. Push him left. They tend to fall, And then push and, and ten to four. If you push him <laughs> out of his shots, because if you watch and see when MJ scores, he scores from sh- from from spots. When we realized we had him out of those spots, the other guys didn't know what to do. So even though they were in the triangle, when he would break down, then we would go into a collapse. Let everybody else beat us. And right. that's exactly what we would do. He would pick the ball up, and when he picked the ball up, Joe was Joe was heavier than him. Joe was stronger. Dennis was big. And if he went in the air, three people had to be in the air as well. We're not gonna we're not gonna let him have a clear pass to the basket. And when those other guys started hitting spot up shots, you tend to not want a double team, but we didn't care. We stuck to the rules and we stuck to what we were gonna do in our game plan and for two years it worked in our favor. The third year it didn't. That's all. Yeah. It's that John, simple. Uh, and I, I it's, yeah, sorry to yeah, no, I just, you mentioned Dennis, and look, there's been so much said, and, and there's so many people have opinions on, on Dennis Rodman. Um, Steve Kerr, I, I remember a couple of years ago before Western Conference Final, he was on a radio show, and, and somebody brought up Rodman, and he said, hey, man, he's one of the best teammates I've had, a guy who continued to work yeah. hard, et cetera. Um, he said, you know, you leave the gym at 3 in the afternoon after practice or whatever, and the next morning... You see things on the front page of the paper, and you say, oh, my God, Dennis, what did you get into between 3 p.m. and 3 a.m. last night? <laughs> what, what was he like in Detroit in the early stages of his career? Well, he was quiet. He just started, you know, hanging out um, like 90, 80, 87. We started going to clubs, he and I. Uh, yeah. You know, we were 22 years old. He was older, but it was, I was 22 years old. So, you know, you do what 22-year-olds do. You do what rookies do. You you go out and, you, and, and you know, people come up to you. But we started playing a lot. Uh, he didn't play a lot in the first. And we started playing a lot. And remember, my first year, we go all the way to the Eastern Conference Championship. We, we right. beat Atlanta. And we beat Atlanta. We beat, uh, who else? Milwaukee. And next thing you know, we're playing against the Celtics. And they're like, what is this? So you go from being you know, a small town to, to a nice city. And you're, you're, you're us and uh, Red Wings were the things people talk about. It was hockey town and then the Pistons were, were making noise again. So it was a great thing, uh, I would say. So he was really quiet. He's still really quiet. This is the thing people don't get about Dennis. He's introverted. Uh, but when he parties, he has people around him. He likes to party. But he's just like any, not like anybody else, but he's introverted. He's not. He's really humble. He's really generous to people. You can see that, too. He's going to stop, sign autographs, ask you questions, give you my jersey. If he could have gotten naked, he said his last game he was going to get butt naked and run off court. <laughs> I'm glad that didn't happen. But he would, give you his, he would give you the shirt off his back, and that's who Dennis is. Dennis is probably one of my favorite people on the planet. He's my brother, man, and... People, that, you know, this is what you need to understand. He's one of the only free people on the planet. He's, he's free to do whatever he wants to do and doesn't care if you don't like it. So that's the freedom. When when did he get that way, Spider? Because you could, I, I know in the documentary they were trying to kind of give you the background on him to understand that he what he came from and where he was and. For a lot of us, that that's confidence. But being an introvert, I wonder: was it the confidence, or was it the fame? Was it a, a combination of everything? It was. I would say, the more you go around and people start catering to you, you start easing up, and they start giving you things and wanting you to be places and want you to be around. Um, he started realizing that a lot of that is fake too. You know, people want you right. around when you're famous. Yep. 
uh, right. when they can get something from you. So he knew there was a lot of takers. So as you're going to have all those takers around you, you know, he, he had his people that he trusted and people he didn't. Hmm. John Sally joining us on Tim and Sid. What what do you remember yeah, most sorry. about <laughs> what do you remember most about that rivalry with the uh, with the Bulls, John? That we beat them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's amazing the revisionist history <laughs> over the years. I was t- last year at the finals, John. I, I finally, the, like the seven-year-old in me, uh, went up to Kevin McHale and I just said, "Hey, man, there was a long time I didn't like you." And he said, "Well, why is that?" And I said, well, I grew up a Laker fan as a kid, like you were my arch nemesis. He said, well, we beat the Lakers all the time. I said, well, that's not the way I remember it, Kevin. So I I just love that all these years later, you remember the Pistons being the one that uh, always had Chicago's number. Yeah, we just, uh, it, it was a trip. I don't really remember a lot from the career because it was almost like I was in a trance. I told somebody, I said, this, this is really feeling like, you know, I see those videos and I don't even, you know, feel like I did it because you're in it. You know, you guys got to go, hey, the game is tonight. What you doing now? Well, I'm at work and then I'm going to do this and this. That I didn't have that glory. Right, that, right. My life was that game 24-7. So, you know, in, in, in trying to remember what you got to do, what move this guy does, uh, what we're going to do in this scheme, you know, that's the only thing I had in mind, only thing I had time to remember. So I don't, you know, when other people say it to me, they go, you know, was it that easy? Do you see it that way? I go, ah, I just remembered, pay attention to Michael, uh, try to keep their possessions down. Let's score every single time we get a chance to make sure you right. score. Don't, you know, no easy baskets. That was another thing. Um, hit your foul shots. Like, you know, literally every shot we have of having more points and stopping them from scoring. We made it so easy. There was a thing where Chuck says, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say uh, the guy with the orange thing on the other team can't put it in our orange thing <laughs> in, our, in our round basket. And then when we get the ball, we're going to try to put it in the basket immediately. Right. So right. imagine if you only had to think that way, if you only had to think of the most simple thing. Don't let your man get in between you and the basket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, everybody else is this scheme and this thing and this percentage. We're like, so the percentage is this. If you shoot the ball this many times and I don't let it go in, but I shoot it the same amount of times and mine goes in more than yours, you win the game. You keep it simple, right. and and it's a, it's a fun game. But then it started, you know, getting to the point where guys are saying things and I guess, you know, there was all the media was around Michael. You know, they would come in and talk to Isaiah, but the media was around. Of course, you know, it's set up. You're watching right. him. You're buying the sneakers. You're seeing his commercials. He saves the world in um, in uh, space, <laughs> yeah. space, jam. space Jam. I mean, yeah. this guy is important. So, but, and we kept getting in the way. You know, for a long time, I would say, well, he wasn't the greatest player ever. You know, ever's not only, you know, not over. It was just me being a pistol, and I had to admit to that. This, the guy is, is definitely the greatest player to ever put on a pair of sneakers. All right, here's the one that I don't understand from these last two episodes, and I'm going to ask my friend John Sally if he believes that Michael Jordan went to Vegas and simply went to Dennis Rodman's door, knocked on it, and got him out of Vegas. Like there was no pit stops along the way for Michael Jordan while in Vegas. Are you... There, I feel like this thing vetted by Michael Jordan may leave out some certain things about Michael Jordan. Do you feel the same way? No. Well, think about this. Think about if Michael Jordan does something, it's like the Pope doing it or like right. the, the president. So you, you, he really, he, if he did play a game, it was going to be a private one. <laughs> MJ had no privacy. So it, it would have been a story like, hey, Michael Jordan's in Vegas. You understand? If yeah, that's what yeah. would have been the story. So he really couldn't have, you know, gone to uh, in that position. And no pit stops. getting Dennis out. Yeah. Getting Dennis out. Uh, you know, hey, we need you. And this is what's going to happen. Let's go. And, you know, tell him the truth. Dennis is going to come over. He's not going to 
say it the way you normally would say it. <laughs> uh, yeah, how you doing, brother? Yeah, I need a cigar. Yeah, you got a cigar? Yeah, I got a cigar. All right, thanks. <clears throat> you don't have to say much. Like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. That's what it was. Like, I'm back. I'm here. I got you. And and they had him. But also, a lot of things I tell people is a lot of other people get in the way a lot of times, man. A lot mm-hmm. of people get in the way uh, of what they think you should do. And you have hanger-ons who don't really – they don't know the backstory. They they haven't been in practice with you. They haven't, right. they haven't like, you know, felt like they were sacrificing for you. So you can't trust a lot of people around you. And then, the, you know, a lot of people have this thing of feeling their worth. You know, when Dennis was like, well, I was like the, the third, you know, third banana. No, the, the second banana, it's, it's, it's the Beatles. <laughs> it's the Beatles. It, it's, you know, as Phil Jackson would constantly say to us, yo, we got to play like, like with a, a Grateful Dead. Everybody could look and do whatever, play a different instrument, but we got to be in rhythm. And, right. you know, when, you, when you're when winning, winning covers a multitude of sins. If you're just happy with that, you know, and it wasn't their ego. It was it was literally a team saying um, we're more important than the players because you don't want the players to ever feel they have power. Right. If they got power, you know, then they're not going to listen to the authority. So, I think it was a huge mistake on their part on how they handled it. The Celtics handled it different. They were gonna mm-hmm. they were gonna let you retire. They understood that not only were they a team trying to win championships, they had the guys to win championships. And hey, when it's time to retire, it's time to retire. You know, I'm, but I'm they didn't want to do it picture. that way. I'm just trying to picture that scene that Carmen Electra was talking about. But the door opens. <laughs> there's MJ here to grab Rodman. She's covering herself up with a bed sheet, and she must just be like, what is happening right now? Like wanting to be naked in front of Michael, too. He was like, I'm not going to call him. like, <laughs> I've been waiting on you. Like, you know, what right. you really want to say, like, yeah, Carmen's my girl, man. Carmen's one of the coolest chicks ever. She's a hip hop head too. Like I, I love Carmen. Nice. Uh, listen, I feel like we could do this for hours, but unfortunately, we have uh, we have run out of time. It's great to catch up with you, and uh, hey. I hope the family stays well in paradise. Okay. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. And tell Sid to have fun up there at his cabin. I mean, in at his house. <laughs> right. Appreciate it, my dude. Uh, let's talk again soon. Why? Right. There is a. Uh, John Spider Sally. I feel like there are like 15 more questions that I had, and I just I looked down at the time constantly to try and fit them in and knew we weren't going to fit them in. Well, the biggest thing that I took from this is I can now call my mother tonight and say, John Sally heard me yelling through the TV screen <laughs> when I was nine years old, and he recognized my voice. So th- those guys on TV can actually hear me when I'm yelling at them. Uh, my follow-ups would have been about Carmel Electra, but that's a story for a different day. Sure.